When we talk about design, we're often talking about solving problems. Today, we've got a challenge that crops up quite frequently when using Canva, and that is how we can get our image positioned really nicely with inside a frame or when we're putting it in a certain block area within our Canva design. So I've got a quick, very rough example here on the chalkboard where I've got a kind of blob type frame and I've got a headshot within that frame. So this is what we're looking for here. So we're looking for something that's landscape simply because if we were to draw an outline around the area with the photo select selected, we're looking at that kind of square to four by three ratio, a little bit wider than square. And when we drop our image into the frame, the rest is gonna be masked or cropped out of the shot. We then need to look at the space within our headshot. If it's taken too close, as in the bottom example here, we're gonna have a major problem, mainly because our head's gonna be right up here. And if we, for example, we take it to the head, kind of comes up to the top of the image, we're gonna lose a key part of that within the frame. The final step is we don't always get our headshot right in the middle in case of what we want here. What we might find is instead, we have our person off center here. So what we're gonna be doing is looking at how we can move that image with inside the frame and therefore move the focal point so that we can get our person exactly in the frame area that we want. Let's head over to Canva and take a look. Now we're in Canva, I've created a new design, which in this case is an Instagram post. I'm gonna start with a blank canvas and then we're gonna add in the effects that we want layer by layer. So I'm gonna to go to elements. No, actually, in fact, we'll go to background and just put a, a simple background color or image or potentially texture or gradient behind our design. I'm gonna go for something like this, relatively neutral, and then we can add shapes on top of it, but this gives it a nice background. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to elements, and then I'm gonna select frame or search for frame from these options. Frames are great in Canva, albeit there is a finite amount available but we can see certain designs and styles that we can add in. So when we looked at the initial part of this tutorial on the chalkboard, we had something along the lines of this, which could work quite nice, overlapping or cutting in to the image. So we could either have the entire frame, I think we need a more neutral backdrop behind it to do that. So what we could do is go to edit image, and then potentially apply something like a duotone onto the background of the image, and that will give it a more neutral backdrop. I think that's what we'll do. So I'm gonna select the sea green background. Sometimes our frame gets lost. It will come back in just a moment. So the next stop is to have a search for the photo. Ah, there it is, it's back. So we're gonna have a look at a headshot, stock photo that we can add in. So here's a good example of one that we could have too far cropped in, especially if we decide to rotate this frame to get more of an angle on it. So let's drop this lady into the frame. And as we can see, it's actually rotated her with the frame as well. Okay, so the frame hasn't given the best example because that still works quite well but I can double click on that image and I can move it left to right, but I cannot move it up and down simply because there is nowhere to go on the photo itself. We don't have that extra space around the image to be able to move it in that regard. So I could undo it, Control Z a couple of times, and now I'm gonna select that image again, delete it, and this time I'm gonna select another photo which has more space around it. So we can see here that this is a little bit busy, so we might want to just move it along. And we also might want to enlarge the image. This is something, of course, we couldn't do on the last photo because there's nowhere for it to go. 
so by just enlarging it we're getting rid of these plants in the background of the photo which kind of get in the way a little bit especially on a busy backdrop and there we go we can always rotate it back to its original position so by double clicking we can edit the cropping area of the image with inside the frame, meaning that we can really get it exactly as we want. We could zoom in a little bit more, just so we don't have quite so much of the background in the shot. And we're taking out a lot of this negative space on the photo to really hone in on what we want to show. Okay, we've got a few design options then as we pursue with our problem solving. So here we've got the image just going off the screen and then we can make it much bigger again so bringing this young woman into the focus okay a couple more options we could apply to this image um, we could apply some more effects to this backdrop if we find that at the moment is still kind of the fighting or competing for that prominence so one option is to just get rid of that backdrop altogether Another one is we could have a play around with different effects. So we could bump up the contrast of the backdrop. We could go down to the highlights and take them down just to make the image darker. Same with the shadows. Play around with the warmth settings. So it's got that kind of blue hue over it at the moment, which is very much like an Instagram photo effect an Instagram filter, and we could just play around with the X process. There's no right or wrong here. It's a case of just having a play around with the different effects until you get something that you want. Okay. We could, again, another option, go back in and use another duotone effect. There's also the color mix effect as well where you can get some quite weird and strange effects with that. But say, for example, we're saying, okay, that's still too strong and the colors are too different, so it's fighting for prominence. So we could pick another duotone effect. So I'm gonna go for the sea blue. And I could just darken the shadows a little bit more. And say our company brand is more purple of a purple so we could go across to that so we've got the texture coming through then and really quite a different color format and our final step then is to bump the contrast up once more potentially tweak the saturation if we're finding that it's um it's a little bit too dark. And we can just bring the highlights out again a little bit more. Okay, so now we've got our image in place, we've got our backdrop, and we might need to just add a title. So what we'll find is problem solving once again we need to get the title in and potentially a company logo in as well so let's have a look for a logo first and foremost okay say this is our company logo colors don't quite match so of course if we, these were the brand colors we'd adapt accordingly but in this case, we're gonna pick a color off the photo. So I'm gonna select that one and it's getting lost in the background. So we're gonna go slightly lighter and then the, we'll change the, the burnt orange color to white. So that's our new company logo, bottom left-hand corner. We then got our final step in terms of we're gonna welcome a new member of our team. So once again, we can either choose the text options or we could 
have a look at something like this. So I'm going to select the You're Invited. Always reminds me of the cocktail movie back in the 80s. So I'm going to select Welcome. And we'll check the, we'll change the color again to that really light lilac color. We find out what the, where the pink's coming from is actually from a text effect. So I'm just going to get that into position, go to effects, change our color in the background. Again, maybe something that's more in line with our brand. So it's a slightly more subtle in there. And we're going to add in our new team member. Okay, so this is playing around with no brief whatsoever. You'll have the advantage of actually having a brief and an overall brand to work with in most of, the, most of your time when you're creating new artwork. So what we're always trying to achieve is to remain consistent to the brand, to build out from the brand. So if this was our brand scheme and colors, we've done that then with the background. If this company's about working with environmental policies, for example, we've got the tree shape in the arrow here. So everything ties into that brand, even this brush, very natural brush style for the frame on the image. So that's how we can use the image frame options and combine multiple effects to get our brand consistent across social media graphics. Hope you've enjoyed. Cheers.